Hey everyone, it's Scott from Wildlife Inspired, and today we're going to talk about macro photography adapted for the wildlife photographer. This is part two, and we're going to get to it right after this. In part one of this series, I, I tried to show you less expensive or easier equipment that you could use to um, do some introductory mac macro photography. So we talked about what is macro photography, reproducing at a one-to-one -one ratio. If you're not really sure what that means, you can check out my first video. There's tons of information online about macro photography in general. But I specifically wanted to do this to maybe stir an interest in some wildlife photographers that might want to get out and experiment a little bit more. So in the first video, I talked about a, kind of a basic macro setup, basic lens, flash what you can look at in a flash and uh, in this video i'm going to talk about none of that i'm going to talk about using your existing equipment and how to maybe adapt it to go out and enjoy some macro photography so i'm going to show you uh, right here i've got two lenses that i'm going to work with uh, in this video the first one is a smaller lens and then i'm actually going to use my long lens so out in the field i'm actually going to go in my backyard and, and record so you can see the distance that i'm shooting at give you some test samples actually from the field that I was uh, shooting in, right in my pollinator garden back here. Um, and for that video, I used a 400 millimeter. Now I've got a 500 here, but basically you're just gonna take your long lens and make a couple of adaptations. One is you're gonna add a teleconverter. So in the case of the video that I did outdoors, I used a 1.4. I also used a 2.0 teleconverter. And basically you're just multiplying your focal length by the factor of that teleconverter. So 1.4, multiplied by 500 equals 700 millimeters. So now you've got a focal equivalent of 700 millimeters. You're adding magnification to get not closer to the subjects, but to make the subjects larger uh, when magnified onto your sensor or projected onto your sensor. So teleconverters is the first thing we're gonna use. And I'm not gonna show you with this lens, but I'm gonna pop out my little lens. I shouldn't say it's, it's not too little, but my 70 to 200 lens. And I've got a few things to show you on this. So this is my 70 to 200, and this is the one I wanna work with the most um, for this video. So the 70 to 200 right here has a couple things added to it. So I've got, that's the base lens right there. Now on this one, I've added a 2X teleconverter. And I would recommend that uh, if you've got a good quality 2X teleconverter, I will say that the, this is the new Nikon Z mount 2X converter. The F mount 2X converter, I'm not a huge fan of. I think there is a little too much image quality loss. I did not see that nearly as much with this teleconverter. So I'm really excited about the uh, the Nikon 2X teleconverter. And that's gonna convert this 70 to 200 millimeter lens into essentially a 140 to 400 millimeter lens. Now, because I'm using a teleconverter, it is important to note that you do lose some light. So this effectively goes from an aperture of 2.8 down to 5.6. A 1.4 would convert this down to an F4 lens. So. Again, a lot of information. I'm not gonna I'm not gonna overload you with information, but I just want you to know um, that's what, how a teleconverter works. It adds magnification, but it costs you some some stops of light. So in this case, I'll be shooting this setup in this video. And there's two other things I'm gonna talk about, and I'm gonna pop these off and just show them to you. These are extension tubes, and in this case, I'm using an 11 millimeter and an 18 millimeter. Now you can use more. And there's some pros and cons to this. So extension tubes in general, what these do, they don't magnify the image per se, but they allow you to get closer. So in effect, you can project the image larger because now you're working closer. So you add the teleconverters, I'm sorry, the teleconverter here, the extension tubes here, and all of a sudden you've taken a reproduction ratio on this lens and you've amplified it. Now, macro photography, again, we're looking at one to one, which means the size of the subject, let's say it's one inch wide, is going to project onto your sensor at one inch. Now, that's not standard for wildlife lenses. Most wildlife lenses are about five times less than that. So somewhere around 0.2 would be the magnification. So it's five times smaller on your sensor than it is in real life. But if you can get closer, you can increase that. And there's a lot of charts out there. I'm not going to make this too complicated. I'm going to show you the actual examples because for me, it's always about what's practical and what I can show you hands-on. So I'm going to show you hands-on. My guess is a setup like this, we're going to go from about a factor of 0.2 to maybe 0 0.5, 0 0.6 in that range. We're going to get close to one-to-one, -to -one, maybe even a little bit better than that. We're going to get close to one-to-one. -to -one. We're not going to quite achieve it with this setup. A couple of the... Uh, 
the advantages and disadvantages. So the big advantage for all of this is we're getting closer to that one-to-one -one, uh, reproduction ratio. The disadvantage is as you add glass, whether it's a teleconverter and the other uh, video I talked about diopters, as you add elements, you have to lose some quality. It, you just have to. You're adding more in front of the lens or between the glass and the sensor. So in this case, a little bit of reduction in image quality. The same applies when you add these extension tubes. You may lose a little image quality here. You may also lose a little bit of light just from the process of how these work. You have to remember, the lens is designed a specific way. And as we adapt this, we're changing the way the optics are really designed to be perfect. So we've gone from this really perfect, I mean, and the 70 to 200, by the way, is a super sharp lens. So we've taken really near perfect glass and we've just added some stuff to it that's gonna affect it. Now I'll show you how much, again, real world examples, I'm gonna show you how much it affects it and how much you can expect the image quality to suffer when you add this together. But here's the neat thing. A lot of wildlife photographers are gonna have a, a, a lens in this focal range. So 70 to 200, maybe it's a 70 to 300. Maybe it's a 300 F4, 300 2.8. I use a 400 2.8 or a 500. You, if you're a wildlife photographer, especially a bird photographer, you probably have these lenses already. You may even have the teleconverters already. So the only gear that you're looking maybe at is some extension tubes, and these are not super expensive. I'll put the uh, link for this product down below. Uh, I happen to like these. The name of these, is, uh, it's M-E-I-K-E, Meek, Meeky, Mikey. You say it down in the comments. You let me know how it's pronounced. Um, but well-reviewed, and I've had no problems with this. Again, I'm not a macro photographer, so somebody that's a macro photographer, if you want to put down in the comments a better brand, but uh, well-rated re everything that I read about these was, was pretty good, and I've had no problems with it. Now, a couple of things as you see me out in the field working. When you add all of this between your lens and your body, I will say I, I, I worry a little bit because especially with these extension tubes, 400-millimeter lenses, 500-millimeter lenses, some of these lenses weigh eight to 12 pounds, even more for some of the older lenses. And now you're adding all of this, these connectors, you're putting all of this in between. And some of this is just plastic housing. So I'd be very, very cautious if you are planning on adapting your long lens to use these teleconverters. And also on top of that, the extension tubes, just be really, really careful. Okay. So uh, I'm not as worried with the 7200 because this is a little bit lighter lens. But when I had my 400 out there, I was I was worried about it, but I did take some pictures using all of that. So what I'm going to do now, I'm going to actually go out in, my, in the field. I've actually recorded this video all, already. So I'm going to take you out in the field in this next video clip, and I'm going to show you practical, functional pictures. And I'm also going to show you the working distance. So I'm going to show you without the teleconverter, or I'm sorry, without the extension tubes and with the extension tubes for both my 402.8 with a teleconverter put on. And then I'm going to take the 200 millimeter or the 70 to 200 millimeter uh, with a, a teleconverter on and then I'm going to add the extension tubes and, and you're actually physically going to see how much closer I get the big advantage and, and the, what I use these setups for I'm not using this for the small tiny insects where I want tons of hyper detail but it works great on things like bees butterflies it's an amazing setup for butterflies and anything that's kind of a little bit larger. So maybe some of the caterpillars that you might want to photograph, definitely great for flowers. So it's a really, really nice setup for subjects that are just a little bit bigger. And here's the big advantage. With a macro lens at 100 millimeters, you may feel compelled to get really close. And when you do that, if you're working with a butterfly, that butterfly could just fly off because you're too close. I found with both the 70 to 200 and my 400 adapted with the teleconverter and or the extension tubes, it was almost the perfect distance for butterflies. And I'll show you some of those images at the end that I took over the last month or two. Um, but right now, let's go out in the field. Let's watch the video and then I'll come back and we'll wrap up and I'll show you some of those images. So what I wanted to demonstrate out here was just the focus distance, which is how far can I get? And then I'll show you the images that I capture with each setup. Now I'm going to start with my, my bird setup. This is my 400 millimeter with a teleconverter. So I'm at 560 millimeters on a full frame sensor. And let me show you how close I can get. I'm focusing on this cluster of flowers right there, the yellow cluster of flowers. And there's one flower right there. Okay, so that's as close as I can get. And I'll show you what that image looked like with the teleconverter at 560 millimeters. So you saw the distance, quite a, quite a distance away. About minimum focus on this is about eight feet. Now, what if we add 
some extension tubes. Now, the longer your lens, the longer these extension tubes. Now, I'm, I'm limited in what I have here, so I've got this um, 29 millimeters worth of extension tubes. Somebody will probably tell me that this isn't enough, probably 40 millimeters, but uh, this is what I have. And I don't shoot this setup. Uh, and I'm also adding a lot here, which I don't like, a teleconverter, extension tubes, uh, F to Z adapter. I got a whole bunch of stuff going on here. But let's see what this does to focus distance. Okay, and I'm right there. Okay, I'll show you what that one looks like. Okay, so that's as close as I can get. I, I'm guess, guessing now I'm six feet away, so I went from about eight feet to six feet. It got me a couple feet closer. So now I've got the 70 to 200, and this is a, a every wildlife photographer, in my opinion, should try to own something in this focal length. If you're shooting large uh, mammals, it, it's great. You can get a little bit closer and you can do macro-like work. I'm gonna show you what that looks like here, um, but it's a very, very versatile setup. If you're shooting sports, pets, it's a great lens for pets. So even if you can't get the 70 to 200, if that's out of your budget, um, these focal lengths work very well in that range. So let me see what the focal distance is. So I'm gonna to try to estimate, I'm gonna be probably somewhere, I've got no, no teleconverters on. I'm gonna go at 200 millimeters. Okay, I can get a little closer, not too bad. There we go, okay, so that's minimum focus. And I'll show you a comparison at 200 millimeters minimum focus versus 550 millimeters minimum focus, what that looked like in frame. It's about the same scale. There's not a significant difference, but remember, I haven't added any teleconverters yet to this. The first thing I'm gonna do is add a teleconverter. The, the, the teleconverter will not change the minimum focusing distance, but it will double the magnification. So I should start to see a pretty significant improvement. Now I do have the new um, Z-mount teleconverter for this one. So let me pop this on. All right, now I'm gonna power this back up. Should be this, remember minimum focus isn't gonna change. But I should be getting a lot more magnification from the lens itself. Okay, right there's minimum. All right, now look at the difference in magnification. Uh, estimated distance away, three and a half feet, somewhere in that range. So that's the minimum focus for this lens. I'll put the actual minimum focus up here in the stats. Now, what if I added this, if I added the extension tubes to it? Keep in mind, at this, I, I'm 400 millimeters, 5.6 right now. Oh, I'm gonna put the, uh, I'm gonna put these adapters on. With this setup, the adapters go on first. They don't, they won't, actually won't work the other way. So I'm putting the uh, extension tubes on, then the two times teleconverter, then the lens. Now, let's see. I should be able to get not only a little closer, but I'm gonna guess I can get significantly closer. Let's see, right there. Now think about if you're doing butterflies. I'm gonna show you the image here. Now imagine there's a butterfly here. I've got the ability to back up. So if I wanna give some more room, I can come back here. And I've got this incredible flexibility right here to shoot these flowers fairly close up. And again, I'll show you what that looks like here. Two times teleconverter, minimum focus, 29 millimeters worth of extension tubes. Hope this illustration helped. It shows the actual distance that I'm working at. I'll put a collage of pictures up here so you can actually see on each setup how far away I was. I tried to get as close as I could to minimum focus and um, hopefully this visual representation helps. I also will show you images now, all together composites, which each focal length, I'll add the extension tubes on here where appropriate and you can see what the magnification looked like for this plant. To give you an idea of what one-to-one -one magnification looks like, uh, I will also show you what one-to-one -one magnification looks like with this macro lens set up right here. So hopefully that part gave you a pretty good idea of working distance and what it kind of feels like out in the field. Now just remember, very careful when you're using those heavy lenses. These, these little extension tubes, I just don't trust them. <laughs> so be very careful out there. If you're using a smaller lens, 
again, 70 to 200 here, 300 F4, 300 2.8 is a little heavy, but if you're in that range, 70 to 300, some of those lighter uh, lenses, you shouldn't really have any problems with extension tubes or teleconverters, but if you're with heavier lenses, just take some extra caution. Now, what I've got up on the screen here, I'm gonna get it, get it 100% uh, on this little image here. And this is an image taken of some black eyed Susans that I just did out in the yard uh, in the previous video. And I've got two little copies here. The first one shows what my 400 2.8 shoots when I stopped it down to F.6 versus the second image, which is going to be this 70 to 200 with the teleconverter. Basically, how much image quality is really lost when we added the teleconverter and these extension tubes? So let's start with the 400. I'm going to zoom in actually a little bit more. So I'm going to get into about 200% here. And at 200%, the 402.8 stopped down to F6 really holds up well. You can see it's a nice looking image. I'm going to put, I'm going to lay over the 70 to 200. Now on your screen, you may not be able to tell much of a difference. On mine, I can tell the slightest, the slightest deterioration of image quality. Again, I'm kind of pixel peeping at this point, but I could tell a very little bit a very little loss of sharpness. Now, let me put them side by side. I actually have it split screen. So on the left side is the 400 stopped down to 5.6. And on the right side is the 70 to 200 with the teleconverter and the extension tubes, basically a 400 5.6 lens. So can you see a difference? I, I will tell you at very, very fine detail. Yes, but, but almost insignificant. So a, a slight loss of image quality. But let's get on to some practical examples. I'm actually going to show you quite a few examples here. And the first one is just straight up teleconverter, no extension tubes. This is my long lens, my 402.8 with a 1.4 teleconverter. I was actually shooting a different species. I was shooting some birds and these bumblebees were floating around the sunflowers. And I thought, yeah, let me try something here. This is not macro photography. Again, I'm not at 1.1 on this. I'm not even close. I'm probably around with the teleconverter, maybe one to 0.3 or I'm sorry, it would be a, a 0.3 magnification. Um, so I'm, I'm not really, I'm not really at macro, but you can get some insect images, even bees, just working with a long lens at close distance with your teleconverter. Now on this one, this is 402.8. There's no teleconverter on here at all. This is about as close as I can get. So as close as I could get to this, this is what the proportions would be if you were photographing butterflies. And, and the monarchs are fairly large butterflies. So not the largest, but, but on, on the spectrum, I would say monarchs are on the, the larger side. And I really do like the proportions of this image. So if this is the look you want, I didn't even have a teleconverter on for this one. This was 400 millimeters straight out. No, no, no other adaptation. But when I added the teleconverter, and I put some extension tubes, I was able to get a similar sized butterfly. This is an Eastern Swallowtail. It might be a little bit bigger than the Monarch, but you could see a difference in proportion. I'll, I'll get it, go ahead. This is as close as I could get there. And I could, I could have gotten closer to this, but you could see it's starting to fill the frame. And I barely cropped this. So I only cropped this a little bit for composition. So that's what it looks like. So you could see it's a really nice focal length that this is 560 millimeters with some extension tubes on there, but it's a really nice focal length to get these proportions. You're not going to get detailed eyeballs. That's not this, the style of photography is not that. This is not that one-to-one -one macro. This is macro-like work for the wildlife photographer. All right, let's look at this 70 to 200. So here's the 70 to 200 at 200 millimeters, no teleconverter, but using extension tubes. And this was about as close as I could get. Now, this is a little, uh, it's a skipper. It's a smaller butterfly. It's about mm, half a quarter the size of the monarch. And again, I'm not going to get the hyper detail. This is about as close as I could get to this, this insect. But I, I'm getting a little bit of context. So a little bit of the flowers, a little bit of foreground. I, You know, from my bird photography, this is a look that I like. It's not for everybody, but it is a look that I like. So let's go on to some more. I did some flowers. Now I'm adding the whole thing. Now I've got the teleconverters. So I'm at 400, 5.6 on that 70 to 200 lens with, with the extension tubes. So I've got extension tubes on here plus the teleconverter. And I just took a couple of flowers. This flower is about an inch to give you a perspective. It's about an inch and a half, maybe two inches wide. This is an aromatic aster. Of 
course, it's a native plant. I went out in the backyard, just found some, some little fungus growing around. These were tiny. This is probably half an inch tall. So you could see you're able to get a little bit of detail uh, with this setup. Same setup. Now I've got the extension tubes and the 2X converter. Same setup, extension tubes and 2X converter. And this dragonfly was shot horizontally and cropped to a vertical. So this is a, almost 5,000 pixels, 4,500 pixels wide and almost 6,000 pixels tall. So it's about what you would get on a crop sensor if you had turned the crop sensor camera to the vertical orientation. So I just took a full frame sensor and cropped it down to vertical just for composition. I'll show you another one here. Now this is, again, I said it works well. This setup works well for bees and butterflies because it gives you more working distance. Remember I showed you in that other video what the working distance is here. So I'm about two feet, three feet away. I'm comfortable. I can shoot these bees all day. They're not going to get worried. My flash isn't going to bump into the plant. I'm at, a, at enough distance where I don't scare the subjects and using natural light. Now your, your ISO values, those ISO values are going to be a little bit higher sometimes. So this is a softer light. I think I was around 1100 uh, ISO on this particular image. So there's a little bit of noise in here. I did very little processing on these images. This is a robber fly. Now this is at 100%. Let me zoom out and show you the full thing. That's what it looked like at a camera cropped just a little bit. Again, I'm about 6,000 pixels wide. So plenty of pixels here. Do we have the detail at 100% magnification? Now, I did no processing on this. I didn't do any noise reduction. I didn't sharpen anything. And you can see, I think you could see, there's you're just starting to get those little details in the eye that you see from a lot of macro photography. But again, I'm shooting it at a distance. I'm shooting it here. So it's a looser composition. I would not want to crop down much more than this. This is about as close as I could get. These little robber flies are just a few millimeters long, maybe six millimeters, seven millimeters uh, long. So they're not, not very large. With my macro lens, I can get a much closer reproduction. I can get closer to the insect if he doesn't move, and I can get better magnification. But again, I need that working distance. So if I need the working distance, the 7200 is a really nice compromise, especially for those larger subjects. But I did want to show you, even with smaller subjects, if you're willing to go a little smaller in the frame, you can get some nice images there. And then finally, here's the catbird. Now let me show you. That's what it looked like uh, cropped just a little bit out of camera. No processing, straight out of camera. And what I wanted to see is with my 400, my adapted 400 millimeter lens, with a teleconverter, this had the extension tubes on it. I was probably about 12 feet away. So I, I told you in the first video, when you add these extension tubes, it allows you to work closer, but it limits how far away you can get. And the longer the tubes the closer you can get, but also it limits you how far away you can get. You also cannot shoot as far away. I showed you out in the field what that looked like. I'm going to guess here I was 12 feet away and I had a little bit more room to focus. So I was easily in the range of this 39 millimeters worth of extension tubes. 2X teleconverter. Let's look at the image quality. No processing. All the noises in here, I think ISO on this is about 1400. So you'll see some noise in there, but Listen, it's not the sharpest image I ever took, but we got feather details with all of that stuff on this, this lens. And again, it's a sharp lens. It's a nice teleconverter, but I'm still able to get birds. So if something popped in front of my lens and I'm out there doing some macro photography, again, macro photography for the wildlife photographer, I could easily shoot a bird as long as it was within that range, as long as I hadn't limited myself too much. I wouldn't be comfortable shooting 30 or 40 feet away with this setup, but for a subject like this, 12 feet away, 15 feet away, maybe even 20 feet away, I think, I think it's adequate. I think it could do the job. So that's what I got for you today. So what do you think? You're going to go out and try it? Maybe adapt some of your lenses. Maybe look at some of this gear. Uh, the teleconverters, I think, are really, really important for this function. Most wildlife photographers have them. Uh, take a look at the extension tubes, especially in that 70 to 200 range, that 300 F4 range. If you've got that 70 to 300, if you've got those lenses, take a look at the teleconverters, uh, but also take a look at the extension tubes because I do think it can help you get a little bit closer and maybe you want to shoot some butterflies or some caterpillars or some, some bees, some larger insects. I think you can have a lot of success. I really enjoy it. I'm going to keep this set up. I actually have used it in my yard quite a bit. 
Uh, I plan on taking it out next spring. It's, it's getting to be fall here now, so I don't have nearly the insect population out as I used to a few weeks ago. But I do plan on using this setup a lot more next year uh, for a couple different applications. So stay tuned for that as well. As always, thanks for your support. Down in the comments, let me know what you thought. I just want to inspire a couple people to go out and try some insects. Hopefully I gave you a couple images up here that looked pretty and you want to go out and maybe emulate. But don't think of macro photography, or I should say don't think of insect photography as always having to be those hyper detailed, really, really close, intimate looks at the, at the insects. Take a look at butterflies and caterpillars and some of the larger insects, and you can really do some nice work just adapting your current wildlife gear for macro-like photography. Thanks for tuning in. If you're not subscribed, make sure you hit that button down below. As always, thanks for your support, and I hope we can continue to find inspiration in wildlife together.